Hello everybody, welcome to the Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And today, I'm as a Patreon request from Talking Techno, I'm talking about the 1997 album from Denki Groove A. Okay, Denki Groove are a Japanese synth-pop, techno, and hip-house outfit, I guess. Currently the duo of Takio Ishino and Pierre Taki. Uh, though back when this album released, the outfit was a trio, also including Yoshinori Sunuhara. They've been at it since the very beginning of the 90s, putting out their debut project in 1990 and regularly releasing albums since then, aside from a brief hiatus between 2001 and 2004. As of right now, I believe they've released 15 studio albums, although I haven't heard any of their other projects aside from this one. Perhaps I'll get to the others another time. I'd never heard of this band before the request was sent in, though I had heard of Yoshinori Sunahara thanks to being recommended one solo track of his called The Center of Gravity via an iTunes Essentials playlist back when I was in high school, and I have good memories of that one track. I may or may not have mistakenly thought that track was by Ryuichi Sakamoto for a while thanks to not having looked at it for several years. Denki Groove are not talked about very often as far as I can tell, and they weren't the easiest to research. Uh, I get the feeling they're a lot more of a thing over in Japan than they are over in the English-speaking world. But they're hardly an underground outfit either, by any stretch. For most of their career, they've been signed to the Japanese major label ki Un, uh, which also hosts bands like Asian Kung Fu Generation. And they have a few more recognizable connections. Uh, Paul Van Dyke has remixed them once. Uh, also, there exist photographs of them hanging out with the guys from 808 State, and Graham Massey follows them on Twitter. So, I guess they're friends to some degree, even if I don't know if they've ever properly collaborated on anything. And from what I'm told, this album, their eighth overall, was the closest they came to having a proper commercial breakthrough thanks to the success of a single called Shangri-La that I suppose broke into the mainstream charts according to their All Music biography. Though I'm not sure which charts exactly, uh, I guess it was mostly a hit in Japan. And I guess this album in particular may have seen some traction more recently through getting greater attention through Rage Music. I did peek over at the site after my usual research spots like Discogs turned up less info or discourse than I was hoping, and noticed that this album has significantly more attention on Rake Your Music than any other project of theirs. I wouldn't be surprised if that's where the requester first came across it. I can't say I really knew what to expect out of this, so I kinda just jumped into it. And, well, it's kinda difficult to sum up the sound of this album, but it definitely sounds like it came out in 1997, in a good way. I feel like the primary flavor of this album that I was getting the most similar vibes to was like the big beat movement, like a Japanese parallel to artists like the Chemical Brothers and Fatboy Slim and all those, with a lot of super hard hitting beats and those commercial 90s tinges and hip hop influences. There's also strong overtones here that sound pulled from artists like Underworld as well, and there's a couple of tracks that have a similar blend to their style of straightforwardly heavy techno bangers with shouting vocals. And of course, since this is a Japanese synth-pop outfit, it probably won't surprise anyone to hear that Yellow Magic Orchestra sounds like it was a pretty big influence as well. Uh, Denki Groove have even done remixes for YMO. For the most part, this album is a very bombastic and in-your-face listen that's all about big, immediately hitting bangers. Clearly the kind of thing designed much more for a mindlessly visceral dance party kind of listen and probably not designed to get you thinking too hard about any of it. But at the same time, it's also an extremely varied listen. Nearly every track on this thing sounds completely different from all the others. I'm not gonna say every single one of these 11 tracks was a winner for me, some definitely hit for me a lot more than others, but uh, the album was definitely interesting the whole way through and really kept me guessing where it might be going next. They kind of throw an interesting curveball at you right from the very beginning with the opener Wicked Jumper. Uh, after a quick intro of chopping up English radio announcers, they jump into this very still and calming pad of ambient synth choirs and building a slow but hard-hitting breakbeat over it. Also, they're kind of understated singing and harmonizing with each other. Though halfway through the track, there's a really big change-up with the beats going into double time and switching over to thumping techno beats with the pads getting side-chained a lot more, turning the mix into something that reminds me a lot more of fellow Japanese techno legend Ken Ishii. It's a very solid opener, but I don't think I'd say it exactly sets the tone for what you're about to hear on this album. Chances are, if I'm going to remember this album for anything, it's going to be the style that starts to get explored on the second track, Volcanic Drum Beats. 
Now this is some real, like, the Prodigy Firestarter type shit. Uh, you just got this ridiculously hard-hitting and visceral live drumming being chopped up and rearranged over thick electric bass lines, DJ scratching and jock jam stabs, while you get all this violent Japanese scream rapping on top of all of that, mostly saying the word VOLCANO 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 over and over and over. <laughs> Basically as the equivalent effect of Keith Flint angrily demanding you to inhale and exhale. Actually, when I first put this album for the first time and I heard that, when I went for like half the track thinking I was hearing a sample of someone repeatedly screaming why not in Spanish. Por que no? Por que no? Por que no? <laughs> Same difference, if we're being honest. Just some classic 90s big beat here. The build-ups and payoffs are fantastic, and it goes ridiculously hard. I, I can't really ask for anything more out of a track like this. There are probably more tracks on this album of this particular aggressive big beat style than of any other style. And by that, I mean there's two other tracks that kind of have a similar sound to that. Uh, being track four, uh, You Know Never, or just never. Uh, and track six, Gari Gari Kun. <laughs> Although I will also have to say those two other tracks are actually my two least favorites on the album by some distance. They may bang just as viscerally hard, but I did more often find the vocals on there to be more annoying than anything. I go back and forth between uh, which one falls flat for me more. Never had more potential to actually work, as most of the track has lots of banging break beats and the lead vocalist is shouting in Japanese, basically in the same style as Carl Hyde shouting over Born Slippy, which is great. Although that track gets kind of ruined when there's this really drawn out section where the vocalist goes into this super yelpy falsetto range and he just stays there making these repetitive squawking noises for what's probably like 30 seconds but feels like two or three full minutes. Guy just keeps going and going and going and there's a point where all the beats even completely cut out to just let him screech over and over without any instrumental backing for like eight whole measures or something and Jesus Christ fucking stop. The track's only like four minutes but it feels like at least six which is a shame because outside of that one part the rest of the track is really solid. Gari Gari Kun meanwhile doesn't have a single individual moment I thought was worse, but I probably like less as a full track since it, it kind of just has an annoying hook that sticks around the whole way through. Just shouting this guy's name over and over, or something like that, I, I don't know. And being joined by those way cutesier, higher pitched voices as we're going over this otherwise solid, chaotic, electro-industrial bass line and beat. I mean, it's certainly catchy and sticks in your head, but not really in the good way. The tone of the vocalist's voices feels like they're making fun of someone. Also, the German phone message voice in the beginning is a little drawn out and unnecessary. Okay, but we've been talking about the album's biggest and heaviest bangers. The rest of the album just stylistically jumps all over the place. And it's kind of interesting how, uh, despite how radically different the sound of any two given ad adjacent tracks can be, they still tend to flow directly out of each other pretty naturally, almost like a DJ set sometimes. Like when Volcanic Drum Beats finishes, it immediately leads into the following track, Pocket Cowboy, where it feels like a fragment cut off the end of the previous track is getting chopped up and repurposed into this quirky and off-the-wall kind of minimal house arrangement or something. That track's alright, but not a favorite. Some vocal runs are a little goofy and some others have nice vocoders. It doesn't really have one of the stronger hooks. It's it's a cool, I guess. I do quite like Parachute, though. That's a much longer track running on for over eight minutes and has a particularly solid job of remaining exciting that whole way through, not unlike the album's opener. Though unlike that track, which started out slow and built up and got faster, uh, Parachute starts out moving at full speed right away with its ambient pads and broken up house beats and break beats going up against unstable but grooving bass lines and incomprehensible vocals coming in between the cracks. Just a really solid groove being carried through most of that track, until the last two or three minutes when everything slows down and transitions into an outro segment, which sounds like it may as well be a different track altogether in its honking synth French horn melodies and its much slower hip-hop beats. <laughs> Lots of fun to be had here. There's also a number of other much more low-key and down-tempo moments later in the album, assumingly a little more of Yoshinori Sunahara's doing since the small bits I've heard of his solo work were more down-tempo leaning like that. There's a mostly straightforward progressive house slash trance cut in the middle called Katie Summer, which has a lot of lower key melodic synthplex brightly layering over these propulsive TR-909 house beats. 
both bangs decently hard, but is also pretty chill at the same time. And the album ends with two down-tempo leaning cuts as well. Uh, Smoky Bubbles is the closest this album has to a uh, straight ambient track. Uh, just a lot of really peaceful and chilled out ambient synth pads with some sparse drum machine taps and some low-key singing in the background, like the quietest parts of the opener. It's almost kind of strange that a track like this is even on the same album as Volcanic Drum Beats, even if it's sequenced in a way to not feel so out of place. But while we're on the topic of weird left hooks, uh, the album has a very strange ending with Loop Zombies, or Loop Zombie, or however, whatever version you have translates that. Uh, this is another big left turn into this, uh, kind of lounge jazz kind of cut. Just this somewhat classy sounding singing over this jazzy sample loop, and there's a moment where they just randomly put, like, this, uh, vibrato effect over the singer's voice. And there's also, like, another not really secret track kind of moment tacked on at the end, where it sounds like some kind of circus band is passing by, like, just a mix of MIDI drumming, accordion, and recorders fading in and out. Reminds me a lot of that one part of Jean-Michel Jarre's Equinox Part 8. Random as hell way for the album to end and doesn't really fit with anything else here, but you, you, you kind of just throw up your hands and accept it at that point. Like, sure, lounge closer, why not? Por que no? But I've saved my two favorite moments on this album for last. I'm not sure which of the two I like more, but I think they're about equally really strong and impressed me for very different reasons. First we got Asunaro Sunshine, uh, which is the longest cut on the album at over 9 minutes, and it's quite possibly the most underworld-ish moment out of everything here. There's more super thick pounding techno beats and classic 90s acid progressions going on behind the filtered voices saying the title over and over very born slippy or pearls girl kind of thing once again but they also definitely bring in their own twists on that iconic underworld sound too like how prominently that lead singer is just belting the title almost little opera style or the whole breakdown halfway through where there's all these grand sweeping orchestral strings and the track eventually gets even more intense and epic that from there as all these disco bass lines and beats come in on top of all of it just one hell of a spectacle all the way through, and I was totally invested the whole way through. Nine minutes, very well utilized. But as great as that track is, it transitions directly into the obvious elephant in the room of the album's biggest hit by far, Shangri-La. While I was listening to this album for the first time, there was one point when I was, like, looking it up on iTunes, where I bought it, and I noticed that there was this one track that, which was significantly more popular than all the others, and I was like, huh, that's interesting. Wonder where that big disparity in popularity comes from. And within one second of the bass dropping at the very beginning of the track, I was like, oh, that's why this was the big hit. I mean, maybe it was also used in the intro or outro of some anime I don't know about or something to that effect. I don't actually know. But I think it may have just been a hit off the merit of just being, like, a really good song and catching on with the Japanese public on its own. It's basically a Jamiroquai track. Like, the way that sample of classic 70s disco string sections, uh, sampled directly from the Bebu Silvetti track, Spring Rain, goes up against those nice round Mr. Fingers Can You Feel It deep house bass lines and mildly chunky beat work with the somewhat breathy vocals added on top of everything. It's just so immaculately produced and is such an instant feel-good mood from, like, again, that first one second of the track. I can see exactly why it caught on as much as it did over there. That success is well-deserved. And for a track this good to also be on an album with at least two other tracks which are equally as good for completely different reasons and a bunch of other really good ideas scattered throughout. Yeah, I can see why this album might have caught the attention of certain audiences adjacent to those I typically follow. The album's definitely not quite great as a complete whole. I can absolutely be a little messy and inconsistent with its share of more annoying tracks or wild, out-of-nowhere tone jumps. I also haven't attempted to look up any translations of the, any of the lyrics on this thing. Maybe I got some of the... maybe I got some things wrong. But I have a strong feeling from the way this genre typically operates and some context provided by all the random English words being stuck in that the lyrics probably don't matter. <laughs> I seriously doubt it's going for anything profound. It's just trying to be a mindless good time and hit you with all the best 90s Big B cliches combined with somewhat slick but also goofy as hell J-pop flares with lots of super catchy hooks I'm unlikely to forget anytime soon. And on all those fronts, it succeeds. I obviously can't speak to how it fits in the grander scheme of their catalog. Maybe they have even better albums which get less attention. Maybe this is currently getting more attention than all their other stuff for good reason. I don't know. I haven't heard anything else they've done, obviously. 
but I did think this album was really good. I can definitely recommend it to any other fellow fans of Japanese electronic music, big beat or break beat or 90s synth pop or any of that stuff. I think I'm feeling a 7.7 .7 out of 10 on it. But of course, this is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. Shout out to my Patreon supporters, they're awesome people. You want to add yourself to that list, link to my Patreon is in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time. <laughs>